Raja Lakshmi uh, Joshi. She is joining uh, on the telecast. She is a political analyst. I'd like to get you in the conversation. Now, Prime Minister Modi has arrived in Kazan to at uh, attend and participate in the 16 BRICS summit. So, one of the uh, key issues in the all eyes are on the likely bilateral meeting that can take place uh, between the uh, between Xi Jinping and Prime Minister Narendra Modi. What what is your take on that? A very good afternoon and uh, yes, this is a very uh, strategic uh, time I would say and uh, you know, uh, PM Modi and uh, our country is uh, taking uh, a kind of a uh, great initiative uh, in the sense that uh, uh, see this, uh, this entire summit was uh, formed as an answer to the western supremacy you could say and at the same time you know now what is happening here is you would call it as a kind of an example of an old school diplomacy. This, this diplomacy is something that has almost been forgotten, I think, in uh, recent times and uh, the world leaders. Because most of these world leaders seem to be only talking about either supporting one side of the other or, or the other. Like you have had so many conflicts in the recent past. So in the Middle East crisis or whether it may be about the Russia, uh, Ukraine crisis. So, in all these conflicts, actually, our country and PM Modi has played a very significant part. Now, today, what is even more significant is that in the midst of all the uh, territorial uh, conflict that we have had with China, uh, PM Modi is all said to be sitting with him at the summit and he is also uh, going to have some bilateral talks with him. Now, uh, just before this, uh, uh, this very crucial meeting, uh, there was an important development that, uh, you know, th uh, there was, uh, there seems to be a kind of a uh, break in the ice where uh, the, uh, there will be uh, patrolling along the LAC uh, and maybe the things will go back to uh, the, the Galwan uh, conflict, you know, whatever was the situation before that. So that I think is, an, uh, is a very important step and, uh, but uh, at the same time, I would say that when it comes to China, you know, even uh, I'm, uh, even our leaders know that, uh, you know, what China says and what China does, there could be a huge difference between that. So, while at, while we are definitely wary not to take too, too much, uh, give too much importance to just what they say and we also give importance to their actions, but at the same time, it is definitely important for uh, these bilateral talks to happen and uh, you know come come to some definite uh, very strategic conclusions as so, you're saying uh, raja lakshmi roshi as you're saying that uh, there's a breakthrough agreement that uh, india and china reached uh, about the patrolling along the line of actual control in eastern ladakh what do you think it, it, what can we expect that uh, would that uh, play when it comes to Ladakh? What changes would that place when it comes to the relations between India and China? Is this paving a way to a more sound dialogue and discussions about, uh, about border related issues and the tensions that have uh, been going on between the two countries? Yes, definitely. Uh, at least, you know, China seems to be making some kind of an effort. Uh, in uh, breaking the ice and uh, trying to uh, set things right with uh, India because uh, definitely they, they know that uh, you know right now like I told you you know our diplomatic relations I think they are at an all-time high so uh, as you can see that uh, you know we are a part of the quad which again is something that is definitely there to strongly counter China from uh, from four major countries in the world which includes India so India is a very integral part of quad so China, it, it today looks at uh, India with a very different view than what it m perhaps did uh, uh, maybe a, a, a couple of decades ago. So this definitely is, uh, you know, today uh, India is definitely in a much more stronger position. And PM Modi has, like I said, he has very good diplomatic ties with all the major countries. So whether it comes to Russia, whether it comes to US, which are definitely at loggerheads. So China probably thinks that, you know, it cannot really start relations with India the way it did in the past. So even though today it has taken so many talks, but then at least there is there seems to be some kind of an initiative, some kind of a breakthrough where uh, maybe, you know, if the patrolling actually starts, I think that that is a huge breakthrough. Then uh, again, uh, there, there are definitely many other issues there. But, uh, you know, at the same time, 
we also on our part you know we have been uh, improving our infrastructure we have been improving a lot on that front which earlier uh, due to some uh, you know bad diplomatic and bad uh, decisions i would say in, in uh, from point of view of defense uh, our country had not developed infrastructure on that front on the lac but today we are definitely developing infrastructure so you know there are a lot of things in which uh, actually we stand a huge a better advantage than uh, than china because uh, for china the mainland is much further away from uh, the rajan lakshmi joshi i also like to pose this question is that india is also a uh, uh said to uh, address the issues when it comes to the global south so we have been yes. seeing that there is a, a issue of security and counter terrorism that uh, and we have also seen uh, recently that there an attack took place in gandharbal in uh, jammu and kashmir so could that be one of the uh, key discussions that could take place uh, in the brick summit Ah uh, yes, definitely. Now I was just going to tell you about the global south because uh, uh, initially it was just three countries that had started. Like it was just uh, uh, India, China, and Russia. But then it was uh, uh, Brazil was also included, and South Africa was also included, and that is how you have the BRICS. So then uh, this was actually mainly because of the initiative of PM Modi that you know he is speaking about the global south, which I think is a very significant move when you when i was like uh, when i was talking about the western supremacy so that uh, you know some western countries have uh, kind of uh, uh, they have always uh, uh, you know ruled the roost you could say but now uh, i think this global south is a very important and a very significant move because our concerns and our uh our, our development agenda they are quite similar when it comes to india and south africa we have both been colonized countries we both have a lot of uh, all these concerns of of terrorism also so uh, you know on all, all these issues will definitely be there on the table there will be uh, the discussion about the uh, russia ukraine war and the west asian conflict and also all these terrorism issues and at the same time the the uh, russia also wants to uh push this agenda where you know they don't want to depend on some payment facilities like the swift because then the, uh, russia was completely thrown out of the entire scenario so but you know we uh, uh, as a country we have developed our own payment platforms so that i think you know th uh, these kind of uh, initiatives definitely work in the long All run all right raj lakshmi joshi thank you so much for joining us on the telecast